Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, <coughs> for this opportunity. I would have expected even Senator Sifuna to take note that I have worn an orange tie, and as the SGO of ODM, he should at least be, be fair today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I don't know, we need in our standing orders, when the chair and the committee rejects a bill, what becomes of it? But let me give my Solomonic injection to this conversation, Mr. Speaker, uh, by saying, Mr. Speaker, I know today in the afternoon you had a communication where we are going uh, for mediation under Division of Revenue. Mr. Speaker, what we are even requesting for counties, it modest. It is only 415 billion, Mr. Speaker, against 4.2 trillion budget. While at least we accept that there are challenges with running of counties, including of uh, wastage of resources and corruption, that should not be a reason why we need to deny, uh, to deny counties the money, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, this bicameral has come a long way from 2010 to now. I know, Mr. Speaker, I didn't see the need of this bill because the Constitution and legal precedents even on uh, petition number three of the Senate Republic in 2013 on division of revenue was pronounced itself as Supreme Court, that Senate must be part of budget making process because it is there in the constitution. From, from the word go, I didn't see the need why we should have a, uh, this legislative proposal, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this legislative proposal has been made in a manner likely to make Senate become a rubber stamp of the lower house, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, Senate in its rightful place should and must be respected, Mr. Speaker. We are not an appendage of the National Assembly or any other entity, Mr. Speaker. We are elected by the people. We are entrenched in the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. And that is why the law, has, when a bill comes to the floor of the House, Mr. Speaker, the life of a bill as it is in the Constitution 2010, if it ordains in the Eighth House, if it is passed in the Eighth House with amendments, Mr. Speaker, it goes for mediation. I don't see the reason why we introduce Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in that note, I want to celebrate uh, my successor, uh, Senator Hilary Segei that is now coming of age. Because if you remember my era, I used to shoot straight from the hip. And that is why by the third year, as the Senate jailer chairperson, I was de-whipped. Because if you look at my history, and the answer can bear we witness, my prowess in running the jailer in the last session, even Senator Manzo and yourself, even the JLAC at that time, and I know the chair of JLAC, uh, Senator Cheptumo, was there, and we worked closely. I want to encourage him, being a chair of JLAC is not easy sometimes, because even we went ahead and investigated and forced disappearance and extrajudicial killings, Mr. Speaker. So it is not, but I want to thank the Senate JLAC chairman and the committee for providing guidance, and this is leadership. This is now leadership, and we will take cue on the report of the committee and reject this bill in totality, in total. I don't know whether there is, a, there is such, a, such a name in English. In total, we shall reject this bill, Mr. Speaker. Because I'm happy, at least with the secretariat that we have, Mr. Speaker. And allow me, Mr. Speaker, to celebrate. Because these are our finest drafters and legislative drafters in this house, Dr. Johnson O'Kello, Director of Legal Services, Mr. Speaker, for being elected the President of the Multinational Association of Legislative Council, the first African jurist to sit. That body was formed 40 years ago, Mr. Speaker, but we have Dr. Johnson O'Kello, our Director of Legal Services, who holds PhD in law and has practiced uh, law for our legal practice for over two decades, Mr. Speaker. I know where he comes from. Having education is not a problem. But we celebrate him, Mr. Speaker, for us who have interacted with Dr. Johnson Okello, Director of Legal Services of the Senate. He is a man of immense knowledge and wisdom and guidance at any given opportunity. 
So, Mr. Speaker, allow me to celebrate him, wish him well, as he serves for the next two years as the president of the National Multinational Association of Legislative Council. Mr. Speaker, by merit, these are people who should be occupying the highest offices in the land if you are using meritocracy as a yardstick. But since we use other measurements, Mr. Speaker, like night running and other issues, then, Mr. Speaker, it's always a complicated story altogether, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to make five comments. And thank you also, Mr. Speaker, and your office for supporting our secretariat. We are saying, Mr. Speaker, our secretariat are the best. Uh, Dr. Johnson Okela has led, and I know a number of secretariat from our clerk, Mr. Nyekenye, and the deputies, and the table office here, Mr. Speaker. We always celebrate and have tremendous respect, Mr. Speaker, to all our staff, from even the gate men from the people who serve us tea and food, all our, sec all our staff, even the Sajina Thames are doing a tremendous. And I know these are some total, Mr. Speaker, of what you are doing in terms of leadership of the Senate and the Parliament of Kenya. But also, you should not also gag us when we have also reservations on some of the services in the House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you look at clause number seven, and, and Mr. Speaker, how can you say, this is Article 118 on public participation. How can you say if one house has sold a public participation, the other house should not hold? It is a constitutional requirement that public participation by members of public must be done. Because that is what we get the second opinion, even on finance bill now, Mr. Speaker. Public participation is mandatory. Because you saw there were advisors that were being paid one billion. But the only advice they gave us was to add 10 shillings to a, a loaf of bread, Mr. Speaker, which is causing you and cry, Mr. Speaker. Those are, that, is, that is why we need to go back to the people so that they do public participation. It is in bad faith to say if National Assembly has all our public participation, we should not all our public participation. We, are, we, are, we have a symbiotic relationship. We are distinct. But we must do the job, if it is National Assembly, let Senate do public participation, let the National Assembly do public participation. I remember, Mr. Speaker, even on the sugar bill that is under mediation. When National Assembly did public participation, they didn't switch their areas. What we should be proposing is that if a National Assembly has public participation in Makwene, then now Senate can do it in Siaya, for example, or they do it in Nairobi, we do it in Nandi. We do it in Figa, Mr. Speaker, and, and I think or Bomet, or even Meru, so that we can complement each other, but it's not a competition, Mr. Speaker. So on this one, on the public participation, Mr. Speaker, this is the fall flat on its face and must fall by their own squad, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have seen in this bill, Mr. Speaker, on the joint sitting, why would you call us join? You know the South Af Africa Parliament, Mr. Speaker, when they have a presidential address, SONA, South Africa National Address, they use joint sitting rules. Why are you calling us for a sitting rule, uh, for a sit joint sitting, and let's say you use National Assembly, standing orders, and then you make you the Speaker to be like Deputy Speaker of a National Assembly Speaker? Mr. Speaker, this bill has been drafted with an intention to demean and disparage and eradicate the standing of the Senate, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that is why as a Senate, we can pride ourselves. So the first time we have said we want money for counties, 415 billion, Mr. Speaker. And we stand by that. It will not change anytime soon. But the other day when they were handling issue of uh, fertilizer, they could not even rise up to the occasion and put the wrongs into right, Mr. Speaker. Even in the process that under one care, I don't want to revisit, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I know this issue of county government it does not concern the issue of uh, 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 under section on the certificate of joint resolution. I think this is something we can pass in the, in the Supreme Court in our matter where we said we must have a concurrence signed by the, by the second house, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on clause number 10, whenever the Speaker of the second house disagrees with the question raised and contemplated, the Speaker backs to, to the Speaker of the originating house, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, my worries on clause 10.3, if the originating speaker causes the bill to be modified to accommodate the observations of the speaker of the second house. So now we have removed legislation from members of parliament to the two speakers. Because now, we, we, that is dangerous. This can create draconian laws. Because if the speakers will modify the bill 
and give the house of they are also human beings. They can mislead the country and create even draconian laws, Mr. Speaker. Because if we allow you, Mr. Speaker, we, we know you are you, you you know you are a person of Solomonic organized, Mr. Speaker. And that is why we always have tremendous respect to the speaker. But the law does not envisage a speaker or speakers to be part of lawmaking process, Mr. Speaker. The speaker uh, on the issue of uh, clause number 12, uh, the relevant departmental committee of the assembly or member to be a liberty to adopt the bill and the bill be deemed to have originated the past one to the standing article 1095 of the constitution. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to report to this house, there are many bills that National Assembly has become a graveyard of our bills. So, Speaker, under Article 113, they always refer our bills to the budget, uh, Parliamentary Budget Office and their departmental committees and declare the bill that originated from the Senate as money bill. And therefore, it should not originate from the Senate, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have lost many bills, even amendment. I made an amendment, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of the issues of diaspora. The, the, the National Assembly are telling me that it is not a function of the Senate. So I'm asking, a county like Busia is bordering Uganda. Does it mean it cannot be part of the international community or affected by international law? County like Mombasa is bordering other countries like Turkana, Kajiado. Does it mean it cannot be affected by the international law, Mr. Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, on this one, uh, clause number 12 of 3, we need to be careful because members will be struggling hard to develop bill, Mr. Speaker. You approve. When it goes, they send it and declare money bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, number 50 point, uh, or shall appoint its members of the mediation. I think that is straightforward, Mr. Speaker, because in any case, like the way you did today, Mr. Speaker, uh, like the way you did today, it's just a procedure that the Constitution has provided. Clause number 16, I'll be very quick. A committee of one house with the written permission of the speakers of the Senate and National Assembly go either to deliberate on matters of mutual interest and concern. Mr. Speaker, my worry is on the clause 16.4. The National Assembly and the Senate shall upon commencement of this act prescribe under their respective standing orders for the joint rules for the conduct of the sitting. Mr. Speaker, the houses may on motion prescribe rules and then it goes, clause number 17. At any joint sitting of the houses, the standing orders of the National Assembly shall apply with such modification and variation as of the Speaker of National Assembly may consider necessary or appropriate. So we can have a joint sitting of State of the Nation address. But what this law tells us, that the standing orders shall apply belong to National Assembly. This is dangerous. And it is a joint sitting. I have used an example of a parliament of South Africa. Whenever they have a joint sitting through SONA, they always join rules, Mr. Speaker. So what is the purpose of Clause 17? It is to demean us, to make us like MCS, Mr. Speaker, which we should not allow. I'm not saying MCS are lesser, but the standard of Senate is a bit, a bit uh, I, I, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Clause 17.3, the speakers of the Houses of Parliament shall enforce any directions given during a joint sitting in relation to the conduct of member of parliament in accordance with the application provision of the National Assembly standing orders. Mr. Speaker, you heard the other day, this is in the public record. When I questioned about the Bunge Towers, the Speaker of the Lower House wanted to refer me to the Committee of Powers and Privileges. So if the joint sitting was a prime, Mr. Speaker, you as truly would have been crucified like Jesus Christ. Yet I'm doing the Lord's work or pointing out that does not work, Mr. Speaker. Like, for example, when we are using the VIP lift, you meet with tea, tissue papers, chapatis on your way, yet it has been written VIP lift, Mr. Speaker. So whenever we point out how they have been crucified, is Speaker Moses Wetangula, because I questioned and he said that I cannot access certificate of occupation because simply I am nobody. Mr. Speaker, I would be in problems, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, uh, number close, number 18, the speakers of the Houses of Parliament 
may in consultation with leaders of majority party and minority arrange for a joint sitting for purposes of address, or, which is okay. It is in our standing orders. I don't know why it is here. Yet our standing orders say it, if we want anybody, including the president, to address this house, it is the prerogative of the minority side and majority side to agree. So why are we becoming uh, prescriptive? Mr. Speaker, lastly, on public participation clause number 19, I think I agree with the chair of JLAC. Uh, uh, this is violation of Article 118. Uh, on public participation, I think we are considering public participation bill, Mr. Speaker. Uh, failure to views during the uh, is not invalid. Mr. Speaker, how can we say, Mr. Speaker, you remember Kiambu, the case of Kiambu CC, Mr. Speaker, and others were taken to court. In the finance bill of 2013, the Kiambu County Executive then did not do public participation. For the first time, a ruling was made. Mr. Speaker, can you call the Deputy Speaker out of order for distracting me while, uh, while I'm submitting? Or for, 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 for consulting loudly? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> what's your point of order, uh, Senator Kaduri? No, I forgive for Senator Chalagi. He's my junior, so proceed, Senator Chalagi. Deputy Speaker, you are out of order. General Gay, proceed. The Deputy Speaker, I'm giving him instant justice the way he does. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of, uh, we, we need to be careful on this issue of uh, uh, public participation. I was using the case of Kiambu case in 2013, where they did public finance, uh, with, but finance bill without public participation. The courts have made themselves clear. How can you say here? The committee of parliament shall consider the views from the participating, but you go ahead and say it is not an offense not to consider. It's self-defeating. There is a precedent that has been set in place, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, this bill, I agree with you and your committee that this bill does not hold any water, Mr. Speaker. We cannot be part. Mr. Speaker, in bicameral parliament like in the U.S., and I want to encourage uh, my members uh, of this house that in my constitutional amendment bill of 2024, I have tried and distinguished the role of bicameral. That Senate should be given the same powers as the Senate of the US, where impeachment is confirmed, appointments of the president, including cabinet, and many other decisions, Mr. Speaker. In fact, for example, why would the war emergency be declared by National Assembly? It should be by parliament. Because that's a serious issue that affects even counties, Mr. Speaker. On this bicameral issue, I, 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 I agree with you and your committee that, in fact, in the second reading, we reject this bill in totality, let it go to mediation, but I don't see why we should prescribe something that is already in place, Mr. Speaker, going into the future, Mr. Speaker. And I want to, to say, I know, uh, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of bicameral, I'm happy that some of the House leadership members are in, uh, are in U.S. with the President. They should visit the Congress and the Senate and learn a few things of bicameral. Because especially the majority leader of National Assembly, because I heard him talking the other day on the vision of revenue, can he take a time off to learn how bicameral system operates? So that before you start fighting the other House, Mr. Speaker, that, and I want to assure Senator Sifuna, the reason some of us are invited to Mogotio for goat eating is because we are the real people who plan many things that run around in this country. Others are just, you know, we, we travel to those countries, Senator Sifuna, and uh, us, we have even interest in those countries, so you don't need to travel uh, to see many things. It is better to go to Mogotio, and you should be happy that I'm, I always go to Mogotio because I save the public money. And like when I'm traveling abroad, uh, <laughs> that's another issue is trying to bring with a speaker that uh, you should rule Senator Sifuna out of order. I have never used a private jet, unless other people have used, but I've never used Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you need to protect me. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, let us take the position you have taken. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let us take the position you have taken and reject this bill in totality. Thank you very much, and I support. Senator Chirigay, thank you very much. Senator Manzo Kitonga. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I had an opportunity to look at this bill, and uh, I think 